Welcome back to the program. Well, I guess now is the Human Services Minister, Alan Tudge. Thanks no, very much for your company. That. Oh, sorry. I thought, I thought, I thought, you, I thought, you, I thought you just said you no, I thought pick you it up the, and then... Do I need, to be, the do I need to be here? <laughs> yes, you do. We have well, questions Well, thank you for having you. me on the program. Yeah, but your gambling reform. Your gambling reforms. Yes. You saw my through. first question. Your gambling, the gambling reforms. reforms. They went through they Parliament. Passed the Senate yesterday. All right. So, yeah, really significant reforms in the online gambling space. Mm -hmm. And they do a couple of things. Firstly, they, they crack down on the illegal offshore gambling providers, um, which basically means we'll be keeping more money and more jobs in Australia and preventing money from being connected to some of the crime syndicates in Asia. The second thing they do is they provide stronger consumer protections. And in particular, we're uh, preventing the gambling companies from providing lines of credit to their customers to continue to bet. Because at the moment, believe it or not, or as, as, as of uh, before yesterday, you could, you could spend all your savings account, you could blow out and max out on your credit cards, and then the gambling companies could still give you a line of credit to continue betting with. I actually had a constituent, an unemployed bloke, who was given $80,000 in credit um, by one of these big online sporting so, companies. So if you're someone who companies. does online gambling... Yep. What it, what's going to be different if you log on and when will that be obvious? Yeah, so in, in addition to those uh, measures, there's also a bunch of additional initiatives which I've been leading with the states and territories. And that's going to include things like a, a national self-exclusion register, which basically means if you want to self-exclude yourself because you know one of your family members thinks you're starting to get into a bit of uh, trouble, You'll self-exclude from, say, sports bet, and it will automatically apply across all the other platforms as well. Can you change that? Can you reverse it? Or when you're self exclude you You'll self-exclude for a certain amount of time, and right. you can't reverse that for this time specified. So that's going to be a really important one. It will also have a voluntary opt-out pre-commitment mechanism. So you'll be asked, do you want to uh, pre-commit a certain amount? Um, and you'll be required to opt well, out of that. Why not just go down the path of, and this is specific, I guess, to gaming machines that I'm talking about here. Yep. Why not just try to work with the states to ban them and get to a scenario like what happens in Western Australia? I mean, WA only has them in the casino. Yep. They don't have them in every corner pub like happens in, in all other states. Uh, it's such a regressive tax. Yeah, it's, un it's unfortunately very difficult to unscramble that egg. I, I personally you guys, like... the party that managed I, to unscramble I, the carbon I, tax. I mean, surely you can find a way to do it. I, I personally like the Western Australian situation where there's destinations where you can go and use the pokers if you want to, rather than being Everywhere. every every corner um, location, but it feels but like. Genuine but question, though, Minister. No, Why but, can't but, you unscramble it? You guys did unscramble the carbon tax. That was incredibly yeah, complex. The, 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 a, the answer to this is, is basically we don't, we don't have jurisdiction over this space. Um, the poker machines are, are regulated by the states. They're licensed by the states. All the money is collected by the states. They've got full jurisdiction well, would you do it over, the, did? over the poker. Would you do it if We've, they had well, jurisdiction? We've got responsibility in the online space, almost by definition, because it cuts across jurisdictional sure. boundaries as well as has an international dimension. That's why we're taking such a strong interest in the online space. Well, here's space. a way that you can do it, though. Mm -hmm. A way that you can have an impact in that jurisdiction that you don't, as you say, have legislative control over is via how the GST is calculated from state to state. Because at the moment, WA, in that calculation process, effectively gets penalised mm. because it doesn't engage in the regressive taxation via clubs and pubs pokies. If you guys adjusted that, that would be a way uh, that you could actually have a really profound impact uh, without it being an area that you actually have direct responsibility for. Well, there's barely a Western Australian I don't speak to today it doesn't raise the GST. Here's and, and here's one more. <laughs> um, we know this is a really important issue to resolve. And, and I, I've heard that argument being made before. And I think it's a, it's a legitimate argument which is being put. Um, there's a lot of work which is going on, um, led by uh, my, my you know, Western Australian colleagues in this space. Can I ask you about public housing? You've also recently announced that uh, nearly 9,000 households in... Or sorry, excuse me, that, that, that households in public housing will be able to have their rent automatically deducted yep. from their welfare payment. I know this yep. is something the states have been doing voluntarily, uh, but now you'll be able to move those tenants onto an automatic deduction. Um, is this one of those things that, you know... A, a better federation arrangement, we might have gotten to this much earlier. Christina, you're probably right. I mean, I think this is a no-brainer, this policy, even though the Victorian Labor Party is opposed to it for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's a no-brainer. What it will do is it means that if you're in a public house and you're on a welfare payment, uh, we will be able to automatically take out your rent before you are in receipt of the rest of that welfare payment. Mm -hmm. Now, what that means is that, A, it gives a guaranteed rent 
to the housing providers, which means we're more likely to get further investment mm. in public housing. I don't have the slightest problem with that. And, is there some controversy and, and se- Well, there is a little bit, actually. Yeah. And, and, and secondly, it means that you're less likely to be evicted, of course. Mm. And we have about 2,500 people who get evicted from public housing each year well, well, because they don't pay their rents, yes. even though they're getting welfare payments. Well, what's the controversy around that? I mean, it, it's to be honest, public money for the housing. It is it's public it's money because for Because the... it comes from two different pools of money, first of all, that's the Commonwealth and the state. Uh, secondly, and, you know, this is a same issue around the cashless welfare card, this idea that people, you know, you, you take away some of their autonomy uh, if you uh, you determine that's, how their money is spent yep. before it comes into their that, account. That's the argument which the Victorian Labor government is using, and indeed the ACT Labor government is using. So what? And every other well, major jurisdiction is in support of Before bodies, you so. go slandering all Labor governments, I just want no, to point no, out, I, I, the I, Labor I government just said, in New South Wales went to this voluntarily with the Commonwealth many years ago. The, they they did. The, yeah. the, the problem oh, with the the, the problem with the voluntary scheme is that so many people sign up to the voluntary and then scheme they take themselves and out. then they take themselves out the following yes, week. That's right. And then they end up in, in arrears and mm-hmm. then they might end up getting evicted. And if you get evicted from that's a public right. house, you're in serious trouble. Yeah. You know, because the chances are you're not going to be able to get into a private rental. What is wrong with that? I mean, if you're receiving I, I public so funds, uh, you know, that you're dependent on, but you're get, also in public housing. Get Dan Andrews you know. on your program and ask him about it, why he's opposed to it. I think he's, he's got a an ideological. Busy. He's got an ideological objection to it. Yeah, which well, I don't understand, and yeah, same with you, the ACT government here. What's your view? On, we, had, we interviewed Andrew Forrest yesterday here on the program, mm-hmm. and he uh, made the point that in terms of the, the, the cashless welfare card, he was talking about this idea that, look, at the end of the day, even if it's 300 bucks on the card for buying products, even if a person sold that for 150 or $200 to get cash to on do the wrong thing market. with it, mm-hmm. he says that's still not something that anyone should shy away from being anything other than a good thing because they're getting penalised, 100 or 150 mm-hmm. bucks on the spot fine, as he put it, I believe, uh, for doing that. So he said, sure, it's not ideal, but government shouldn't be afraid of that because that's better than the alternative. Your thoughts? I've I've always said that the cashless welfare card, which I've been leading for several sure. years now, and is getting terrific results on the ground. It's it's not the panacea, um, but we're not going to let uh, 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 perfect get in the way of the good. And um, inevitably, some people try to get around the system by bartering their cards. Mm. But, you know, it's not hap- happening that often. Um, and I think Andrew Forrest is right. If you try to do that, you will face an immediate penalty. We've got other compliance mechanisms in place as well. Um, we had, for example, a taxi driver um, in one of the local Locations who was, in essence, charging say fifty bucks for a ten dollar fare, mm. and um, and then say giving twenty dollars cash to the to the to the person yeah. and collecting an extra twenty bucks cash himself. We were able to identify him and basically threaten to switch off his machine um, if he didn't uh, if he didn't behave. All right, Minister Alan Tudge, we're out of time unfortunately. Thanks you for coming. Not a question on same sex marriage. You must that. I am so disappointed. I'm so disappointed. Our whole program, guys. Our viewers who keep tweeting us, telling us that that's all we ever talk about. See, a genuine policy discussion with a minister in his portfolio. Indeed. (laughs) Thanks for having me. Thank you.